vernacular literature, Philippine literature's order. Speaking of vernacular literature, it is a literary genre that uses daily used language in writing and speaking. It is a written literature in a speech of a common people. It is a writing or speaking that is used by the public or by the common people. It is a dialect spoken by the people on a daily basis or an everyday language. That is why when we speak of vernacular, we mean that it is very much usual because it is the language spoken in everyday use. It is apart from the formal language. Now, why should writers use vernacular? It is a way to develop character and setting in order to be more authentic. More authentic because it's real. It's how they make it. It's how they do it. It is how they say it. Different regions of the country and the world have specific dialects and language patterns that make up vernacular speech used by everyday people. Vernacular is the ordinary use of ordinary plain language in speaking and writing. It is easier to write because it is what they think, it is what they talk, it is what they speak of. Therefore, what they think will be what they will write, and it will be much easier to express the feelings, the thoughts, because of its being commonly used. Dialect is related to a particular region, geographical area, and particular social class or occupational group. It uses a distinguished pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar. Now, what are the functions of vernacular language? It is used everywhere. In their homes, they make use of such language. In school, in offices, in law terms, in medicine, and in media. That is why today, vernacular or mother tongue-based instruction is welcomed in schools because when students think of a language that they are not using in their everyday conversation, they find it difficult to express themselves. Language is a starting point for any literary work. Readers can get anything from the work. So vernacular is the only literary technique that can strike a chord with a majority of people that makes strong connection with them because it is closer to their everyday conversation. Dialogues and phrases often reinforce the setting of a narrative and add depth by creating a sense of realism allowing readers to relate their real lives with literary peace. Now, what is the importance of a vernacular literature? It made literature as a whole more accessible to general public. It also led to the development of new art and literature forms. Literary forms in the Philippine literature is characterized by diversity and richness. Why? Philippines has a lot of dialects spoken. And they also have diverse culture. But that makes the culture of the Philippines very rich.
That is why in the expression of what they feel in the literary forms in the Philippine literature, we could really be, uh, we could really say that we really should be proud being Filipinas for our Philippine literature and our literary forms written are really addressed to the diversity of our people, diversity of our culture. Now it is best appreciated in the context of the country's cultural traditions as expressed in various literary forms with them. The early vernacular literature written were proverbs, sayings, folk songs, love songs, folk narratives, and the early vernacular, vernacular literature would also say and express or tell the younger generations on how the world was created. How do animals possess certain characteristics? Why do waterfalls, volcanoes, mountains, the flora and the fauna exist? We have also written legends as explanation of the origin of things. The fable, fables as stories of animal characters. The epics as supernatural events of heroic deeds that embody or validate the beliefs and customs and ideals of a community. Now, this vernacular literature were sung or chanted to the accompaniment of indigenous musical instruments and dancing performed during harvests, weddings, or funerals by chanters who were taught by ancestors who are called treasures, culture bearers, or repositories of wisdom in their communities. The early writers contributed much to shaping and recording of our own literature, like the Comedia, Sinaculo, Tarzuela, Playlets, and Drum. We have also novenas, catechisms, passion, awit at corrido, novels in vernacular, like the weekly magazines, UYY and others. Now, Filipino writers continue to write poetry, short stories, novels, essays, dramas, sinaculo, salubo. This vernacular literature must be started from beginning writing, just like in beginning reading. What they will read will be what they will write. What they will write will be what they have read. Now, writing vernacular literature is easy. We can use the most comfortable language that we can command. We can take pride in the use of one's own native tongue in the comfortable language of expression. And we can also write contextualized material in support of vernacular literature, preserving culture and tradition of the writer. I'm going to present to you an easy start, start up in writing. Writing of what you are thinking. But I would like to tell you that it is really easy if we will make use of our native tongue when we write. And just we just do not know why we find it really too difficult to express ourselves in our English. Because of course English is a second language to us and we are not yet very good. Most of us are not very good speakers of the English language. While we will try to express ourselves as we write, we still have to think of the English translation. We have to think of our pronunciation. We have to think of our grammar. We have to think of many other things before we could write in English. That is why in our beginning writers, beginning reading with our students, we also could make use of 
the simple startup in writing. Halimbawa po, susulat tayo ng reflection. Di po ba? Malimit sa pagbabasa ng kung anumang literary piece, kinakailangan natin ang magsulat. Ngayon, ang pagsusulat ng kahit na ano na nararamdaman mo ay isa sa mga maaaring i-consider na iyong vernacular literature. Paano siya nagiging vernacular literature? Nagiging siya vernacular kasi kung iyong talaga ang ginagamit mong pananalita, iyon sa iyo ang iyong vernacular. Ngayon, halimbawa, yung reflection, mayroon ng guide tayong ibibigay o mayroon na po tayong guide na susundan. At ang guide na ito, halimbawa, magkakaroon ka ng isang magandang sulat o literaturang sinulat sa iyong sariling lingwahe. Susundan mo lang po ang ibinigay na guia or guide. Halimbawa, gaya nito. Ang tungkol sa kwento na ibabahagi ko sa inyo sa araw na ito ay magiging isang leksyon sa iyong buhay. Ngayon, naisip ko na ang mga aralin na natutunan ko at hanggang po susundan na lang ang mga ibinigay na guide na ito hanggang sa mabuo mo ang isang magandang talata. Gamit lamang po ang isang guide na ipuprovide o ibibigay nyo na sa inyong anak o sa inyong mga estudyante para po alam na ng mata kung ano ang isusulat niya dyan base sa kanyang nararamdaman o sa kahit na binasa o kaya na pagmasdan. Ang kanyang mga agam-agam, isusulat niya na lamang at pupunuan na lamang ang mga blanko, ang mga patlang. At sa pamamagitan nitong paggamit ng ibibigay natin ito bilang start-up, kumbaga ang bata, i-re-revise, i revise i -re -re write para makabuo ng isang tunay na magandang talata. Halimbawa naman po sa English, we also need to provide this reflection guide with the commitment. You are only going to write on the blanks all the things, the learnings, the feelings, the realizations, and the commitment for the child to improve on the writings that he has right, uh, started. Kung baga, ang frustration niya, hindi niya siya gaano mag-iisip ng kung ano-ano pa kasi pupunuan niya na lang ang kung ano ang sinimulan. Ang halimbawa, ako from Bicol, we are from Baal. In Bicol alone, from one town to another, iba na po ang vernacular na ginagamit. Pero halimbawa ko, because I am from here, from Baal, eto, I have already the guide. So nangyari, naisip ko, nasa lapalan ako. Kaya, sa susunod, mag-ingat na ako. And, yan, all the feelings, all the plans of what to do, all the feelings na gusto kong isabi, susurat ko na sana. Iyan po. If this can help you. Ngayon, bakit ko to pinoprovide? Kasi po, if in case, yung inyong dialect, there is already the given English and Filipino, you may just translate for you to have the guide. Ganito po kasi yun. Kung si teacher na frustrate sa mali-maling na check niya, mas na frustrate po ang bata kung wala siyang guide sa pagsusulat. So, para maiwasan yung frustration between the child 
and the teacher, mas mainam na po na magbigay tayo ng guia o ng guide para mas madali sa isip ng bata ang pagsulat. Here is the basic sight words that a kindergarten should master. Ilan lang po ito? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 5, 25 words. So, considering these 25 words that initially, ito ang ibinibigay sa kindergarten. Di po ba sabi nila, ang basic sight words na ito dapat ma-master na ng isang kinder. So, pinag-isipan po natin na i-translate itong basic sight words na to into Filipino and vernacular. So, as a guide, ito po yon. We have these words and if you try to notice, these words, gagamitin siya sa ibang exercises para lalong mapatibay o lalong maintindihan ng bata ang mga sunod-sunod na letra. Kaya po, we deem it wise to present these basic sight words para hindi siya mahirapan pag -abo, pagdating niya sa pagsulat ng literary in the vernacular. Kung titingnan po ninyo ang mga series of exercises which we provided, madali kasi po sa mga susunod, kung nakita nyo po, bago tayo magsusulat ng literature in vernacular, kasi iniisip natin ito, ito yung mga bata na talagang native language nila ang English. And we too were taught first in English before we were taught of the basic sight words in Filipino. Or we do not even have the basic sight words in Bicol or in mother tongue. That is why, to have the uniformity, ito na lang po ang translate natin. And we have seen and we have found out that this is also effective, especially when we deal with our beginning readers. Ang beginning readers namin sa high school are those students who are found to be non-readers even then they are already in the grade set. Meaning, we make use of those words that are listed, those 25 words, and on the next exercise, they are only going to fill in the blanks with the missing vowels. So it is also understood that the vowels are the A E I O U. Now, without looking at the figure one, they are to answer figure two. They only try to choose A E I O U on the blanks so that the words will be read as they belong to the basic sight words. Yan po. Then, may mga spelling of the words aloud. And then, they have the word pairs. Alin ang papares? What will be paired? Yung words then from above, yung nasa basic sight words. That is why, they will also be guided to read after reading the words on part 1, nagkaroon ng drill sa sunod-sunod, ito din ang ginagamit na babasahin ko nila. And then, they will try to find a pair and they will have to read the word pairs until they will be able to create a sensible dialogue using only the given word pairs. Then, they will be asked to write Using this start up, they will try to pretend that they are giving instructions or directions to someone new in the place and they are limited to use the word given in the pair list. So, like this is it. You look here, see my con. Okay, so then they are to read the sentences. This is preparing them to write. It is difficult to let someone write without giving them inputs. So you try to see these are 
very few words to write. However, in the end, we will expect that they are going to write something out of the vernacular language where the inputs were only those simple words. So say for instance, me, I am me, Judy. I like to go, I said, I am here. I come out, I see friends, I can play. Though how limited are the words, we could consider that as a piece of literature with sense where we could help the comprehension questions. Then another me. We like to go. We can come. We see you. We said we like cans. We come to you. We can buy. We can go to do other cars. Then we again have the comprehension questions. Another written piece. I can. I am here at the bank. I am up the tree. I can go to the sea. I can look for you. I can look up the sky. I can come up the room. You and I are friends. You and I are great. We look up for tasks. Then we have again the literary uh, piece with the comprehension questions. Until it will be on the more uh, lengthy written literature by the person who was exposed to the 25 words. So we have here you and I. You and I are still found on the list of the sight words. So we can write, I came up to look for you. You said you like me. I am here for you. We can see, we care, we are here to do ahead, we come up with this, we can come and talk like friends. Then again, there will be comprehension questions. When they are the ones who wrote it, they will enjoy answering because they will understand it because it is a piece of literature that they have read. So, you also have here, you and me, look. I looked at you, you looked at me, I said we can, you said I go, we liked it there, I, I can come, and I can see, you like this, I am at you see, look at me, I'm here, this is me, this is it, I am me, you are you, we can go. So whatever be the interpretation, whatever be the questions given as long as the child or those readers will be able to respond and comprehend to the written piece, then it will be okay. The point is there is something to write because they were exposed to words that they could probably use. Then we could just have some other across the curriculum for that certain literary piece and words that we used. Ngayon, tingnan po natin ang basa at babasahin ng mga salita. Ito po yung mga basic sight words pa rin. Ang ginawa natin, i-translate natin o isinalin natin sa Filipino. Kasi po, kung ang vernacular ng mga bata ay ang pagsasalita ng I, ako, we, tayo, at lahat ng ito na na-translate natin sa Filipino, ito po dapat ang una nating ipapakabisa o ipapasanay sa mga bata. Nandiyan na din po yung ating mga exercises. Yaman din lamang po na ang ating concern talaga ay itong call sa vernacular literature. Ito po, halimbawa, ang mga paired words lang po, pinagparis-paris na salita. Ako po, opo tayo, ako ito, gusto ito, dito po, alis po. Kahit iyan lamang po ay isa nang nabuo nating sinulat na literatura sa ating vernacular. Kung 
may iba din po na pagbigkas kasi halimbawa, iba din ang pagbibigkas ng alae or alis po. O, ganun po. At least, ang naisulat nila ay ganun na rin. Pero, limitado sila sa mga salita na isinalin natin mula sa basic cycles. At ito po yung mga nabuong pangusap at ginamit lamang po ang mga salita ay mga salita mula sa isinalin natin. Ito po ang masasabi natin. Halimbawa, nagkaroon tayo ng tula at ang tula, ito, nakita. Mula din yan sa mga salita sa taas. Ako po ay ako, si Judy. Tingnan mo po, dito ako. Nakikita ko ang gusto ko. Maaari po ba dito ako? Akin ang tingin. Kaya, pwede po ba dito ako? Kaya po ako, alisin ang nasa loob. Kaya ko po, alisin ang nasa loob nito. Sinabi mo, tingnan ko ito. Nasa ibabaw at makikita. Kaya halika, tayo na. At sa tingin ko, makikita mo ang nakikita ko. Kung ikaw din ang nasa lugar na gaya ko. Magkakaroon po tayo ng mga comprehension questions. Pero isa na po na magandang nasulat mula sa kabisadong mga salita. Yun lang po ang ating ibig iparating sa ating sinasanay magsulat gamit ang wika na kinagisman. Yan po. At marami pang pwedeng gawin mula dyan. At ito naman po ang translation sa aming vernacular language. Ibig sabihin, guided pa din po noong basic sight words, pero we translated our words into our own language, our own vernacular in Baal. You have the words here, just like doon sa ginawa natin sa mga sumunod. Basawon ang mga bibisaranon. Ako, kita, sa iton kanako kami, ana, ag, gusto, sadi, silong, Ato, bayda, saka sinabi, mayang, nasa ika, uyan ka, ataas, opo, ini. Kaya, galin po, ini, amo, adi. Ito po ang aming ituturo para kabisadong kabisado ng mga bata. And then, pareho po ang mangyayari sa lesson 2 and 3. Pero, ang mga susunod, Magpiper din gamit ng pareho sa ginawa sa English at Filipino version. Kaya lang magkakaiba dito sa pagbibigkas ng salita. Halimbawa po, kaya is word na kaya. Pwedeng sabihin na kaya. Kaya, ibig sabihin kayang kaya. Kaya, can also be asked, gumbaga, nagtatanong, kaya? So, depende na lang sa kung ano ang bumubuo sa mga salita, sa mga sumusunod. Kasi pwede itong bigasin na, kaya? Kita kaya? Kaya kaya? Kanako, kanimo. Adi, sadi. Galing sadi. Or, pwede ding sabihin at big kasi na, kaya kita, kaya, kaya kaya, kanako, kanimo, adi, sadi, galin sadi. With those expressions, magiging iba po ang kahulugan ng bawat katanungan o ang kahulugan na mensahe ng sinulit, sinulat na mga salita sa taas. Pareho nito, gusto sa do. Adi, ado, sadi, ika, amukaya, puno pa kaya, 
और गुस्तु सद्दो अद्दु सादी इका अमुकया पुनुपुकया पुनुपुकया ang expression po at ang mood ng pagbabasa at ang intonation magbibigay ng ibang-iba na interpretasyon sa sinulat na literatura. Diba? At ito sa mga pangungusap na nakasulat. Magiging iba din ang hulugan. Galin po sabto, kaya po sinabi ka, sadi po kaya itaas, gusto, sadi itaas. Sadi po bayda, ako po abayda, sadi po kaya itaas. Opo, sadi kami itaas, nasa loob po kami, sadi itaas. Mabibigyan ng hustisya ang ibig sabihin kasi kung ang nagsasalita, bibigyan niya ng kahulugan o ng intonasyon na kakaiba. Iba din po ang magiging kahulugan. Ito po, nabayad. Ako po si Chubi. Silingan mo po. Sadi ako. Nababayad ko ang gusto ko. Pwede man po kaya ako sadi? Silong ka na po kaya? Pwede po kaya ako sadi? Kaya kaya ko po, Adi. Kaya ko po, Adi, sinasabi mo, silingan ko. Nasa itaas na babayad, kaya may na. Silingan mo, mababayad mo, ana babayad ko. Kung ika, nasa araw ko. With all the questions that I asked also. Iyon po ang sinasabi natin na mabibigyan natin ng mas magandang interpretasyon, mas magandang pagpapahayag kung tayo po ay gagamit ng ating sariling vernacular language at tayo ay makakapagsulat ng ating sariling vernacular literature in order that we will be able to fully express ourselves kung ano talaga ang gusto nating sabihin. Kung minsan po iisipin natin, bakit po kaya kailangan nating mag-adjust sa kung sino ang babasa? Minsan, sabi ko noon, nung nagtuturo ako na magsulat ang mga bata, eh, hindi mo ka ko kailangan baguhin kung ano ang naisulat mo. Kasi ikaw ang sumulat niyan, ikaw ang may, mas may alam. Kung may mga manunulat nga kako. Gaya ng mga sumulat ng mga nauna pang mga literatura, inisip man lang ba nila na ako ay hindi marunong magbasa ng isinulat nila? Gaya ng mga sinulat ni Jose Rizal na El Filibos Piresmo, alam niya din po ba na maiintindihan ko yun? But, di po ba? Sinikap kong intindihin kasi alam kong maganda ang nilalaman. Kaya po, ganito. Kung ang literatura natin, isusulat natin sa vernacular, ang sino mang sumulat ay maipapahayag niya at magbibigyan niya ng ustisya ang anumang gusto niyang iparating. At kung gustong matuklasan ng kung sino mang magbabasa at kung sino mang gustong umintindi, para lalo niyang mahalin ang ating sariling atin, magsisikap din siya para makuha niya ang kahulugan at buong damdamin na ipinapahayag ng man. Ganyan po kaganda ang ating literatura. Kung ang mga pangyayari na ganap sa isang lugar at ang mga pangyayaring iyon ang makapagsusulat lamang ay ang mga taong nakasaksi, mas maganda kung ang mismong nakasaksi ang magsusulat ng kanyang sariling gamit na lingwahe kasi mas magiging mas makatotohanan yan. Okay? Kaya ang hamon ngayon, tayo na sumulat gamit ang ating sariling wika. Ako po, di, di lang tagabaaw, gusto ko kaninyong ipaabot na kami, apag surat na mo, kung kami amig basa, mas lalong maipahahayag na mo kung ano ang gusto na mong ipaabot, suyan so sinurat na mo. Although po, we have to consider na 
Dito po sa amin, sa Bicol, lalo sa Rinconada, nakapakahirap po talaga. Kasi paglipat mo lang ng isang bayan o town, iba na ang kahulugan ng salita. Halimbawa po, rice, kanin sa Tagalog. Pagdating ng Naga City pa lang, maluto siya. Maluto. Pagdating ng iriga, kanin. Pagdating sa amin, kanon. Pagdating ng katabi naming lugar, dyan sa buhi, nagiging siyang entirely different. Nagiging siyang umoy. Hindi lamang po sa spelling, kundi sa salita mismo, naiiba na siya. Pero po, hindi naman dapat mawala ang lahat ng salita na kinamisnan ng ating mga kababayan. Inirespeto yan noon pa, irespeto natin hanggang ngayon. At ito'y mapapa, mabibigyan lamang natin ng magandang pagpapakahulugan, magandang gamit kung ito po ay itutulong muli at gagamitin gagamitin sa araw-araw na pagsusulat, gagamitin din bilang parte ng literatura at ito ay tatawaging vernacular literature. Maraming salamat po.